talk is Hugo Bray, CCC computer code for calculating atomic and molecular collisions. Thank you. Hello. Yep. Okay. Thank you uh, from me as well to the organisers for inviting uh, me to come and talk. Um, in our group, we are code developers. Uh, if, to get a PhD in our group, you have to contribute to developing a code. There's quite a few of us. Uh, the main players are myself, Vinny Fursa, who was my second PhD student, now full professor by my side, and Alicia Kadyrov, who uh, was my first uh, postdoc, and now full professor by my side. So the three of us are like the three musketeers. We develop many codes, as so long as all of them are called CCC. Um, right. So, um, I'm going to talk about, about four of them, and some of them are, have some uh, uh, flavours uh, to them. Where we are, uh, in Australia, the most uh, isolated uh, uh, capital city on the planet, a very beautiful place, straight down through the centre, you can't miss it. Um, and um, uh, it's interesting to come here, I have an uh, infinite number of equally short paths. really does not matter which direction I go uh, to end up over here. Um, but it's a beautiful place, and I uh, know some of you have uh, visited us. So, some um, uh, brief introductory uh, remarks. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on the historical context because it gives you an idea of the rate of change of codes as they uh, develop. And I think that's important when we want to talk about uh, yeah, utility and usability by others. Um, and the ones I'm going to concentrate is the original one that started with electron scattering on atomic hydrogen. Now it can do positrons, it can do photons on atoms. Fully relativistic, Dirac-based uh, code. Uh, also, heavy particles. I know I'm in the uh, light particle section, but really the same ideas. You know, positron, proton. What's the difference? You know, only a factor of 2,000 in mass. Different code, but the ideas are the same. Really are. Um, so, uh, and the molecular uh, code as well, entirely uh, separate. Okay. Uh, I'm going to begin with basically what Klaus said. Um, you know, our primary motivation is to provide accurate uh, uh, atomic and molecular collision data for science and industry. We know what the potentials are. We know what the particles involved. There's no way to hide. Just get it right. right? And it's governed by the laws of quantum mechanics. The same comment as uh, Klaus made. And in, 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 there are different words. What does that mean? Well, it means we calculate probabilities. If you're going to calculate probabilities, you have to have a unitary theory because you have to make sure that all the flux is distributed uh, between all the possible reaction channels. So we have to work with unitary theory. Um, charged particles interact at large distances. We are also uh, have an interest in formal uh, scattering theory, and that has always uh, bothered us for quite some time. Um, the discrete spectrum is countably infinite. The target continuum is uncountably infinite. It is not correct to simply say, oh, just truncate they count, just take a few discrete states. It's formally a wrong thing to do. This has been studied in the 1970s you know, by um, Heller, Yamani, Reinhardt. They showed that these, taking these states is like an equivalent quadrature rule for the summation and integration over the discrete subspace and the target continuum. So you can't get away with one or two sta states. That's not how you get integrals conversion. So it was very clear to me in the 1980s that what we need is to develop a systemic approach to convergence study is in increasing the number of states. So, and of course it can be a multi-centered charge exchange, positron information. We went into heavy particle proton scattering because we solved the positron uh, positronium information uh, problem. And uh, also, you know, having got uh, fully differential ionization right, it took us 10 more years to come up with a rigorous foundation for collision theory with long-range Coulomb potential, which wasn't even properly uh, formulated. Unfortunately, most of the people who would appreciate that work are no longer with us. Such is life. Anyway, some history. Uh, prior to the 1990s is when uh, it got, things got interesting for myself. There were major discrepancies between theory and experiment for elementary a collision processes such as electron hydrogen excitation ionization turned out that the experiment was wrong for excitation that stopped progress for a while um, electron helium uh, single and double photonization of helium so that was the reason uh, the conversion uh, close coupling method uh, was developed and now it's uh, valid for electron or positron or photon 
proton or antiproton collisions with atoms and molecules, and it's applicable at all energies for the major ionization and, ex and uh, uh, excitation and ionization processes. <coughs> uh, some uh, just an overview of what it is. So, the, fundamentally, underneath it all is the Laguerre basis. It's a complete basis. Uh, everything depends on that. So, we know that if we increase our basis size, completeness of, uh, and the size of the Hilbert uh, subspace it uh, grows, and so hopefully we'll reach convergence if we have the correct formulations. So our target states, uh, one electron target states, hydrogen positronium, it can be thought of as a, a one uh, uh, electron state, a lithium cesium, the H2 plus molecule, uh, linear combination of um, Laguerre uh, basis functions, and uh, two electrons, and a, a double uh, combination of, and we can add non-orthogonal uh, orbitals for helium, for example, you need some short-ranged functions to get good correlation. Um, but in the end, we diagonalize, diagonalize the target Hamiltonian, maybe it's a frozen core Hartree-Fock Hamiltonian, and to get our target states. I don't have an energy uh, distribution diagram because uh, well, Klaus already uh, showed us what happens. Here's just an example I've taken for positron, uh, some target uh, wave function, how it would be expanded. If it's a two-center calculation, positron scattering on an uh, atom is a two-center problem because of the possibility of positronium formation. And that's equivalent to charge exchange when you have proton uh, scattering on an atom. So something that's fairly exotic, positron on an atom, is ubiquitous when it becomes proton on an atom. Right? But the same, uh, the same compl uh, com computational complexities. So you have a double expansion, non-orthogonal expansion, but both complete. So in that case, so it sounds problematic. Irrespective of that, you, we solve the close company equations, as Klaus pointed out. Uh, if you have the same uh, target states and you solve your close company equation, it doesn't matter if it's via R matrix, in our case it's couple lip and string equations, the answers will be the same. It's just the mechanism. So we solve it in momentum space. We find that uh, particularly computationally efficient. Uh, but the system can be ill-conditioned, uh, but of course it's unitary. So uh, no double counting, even though here we have a, a uh, what appears um, um, to be two, sum, two complete sums. So people can ask me about that later on if they're interested. Uh, also a bit of fun, what started off as a project of, uh, happened to have the joy of working with my son Alex, uh, was a, a summer a project for him when he was an undergrad student in second year, just to see if there was, you know, after solving these equations this way for 30 odd years, you know, I wondered if there's a little trick we could play of handling the singularity uh, analytically. And so his task was to see if we can get it going in a simple model, and before long we realized, hey, I wonder whether we can do it all of the time. So by taking the singularity in this particular form, you can recast this, uh, the lip and swing equation where there is no Green's function here anymore. And that uh, worked out uh, quite a bit of fun. And it really tickles my uh, funny bone because now we can put incident energy to be zero. Because that, that works exactly uh, across from positive energies through zero to negative energies. No, of course I haven't told you because it's, uh, it's V... Uh, combined with all of that, right? Okay, and it uh, works uh, for neutral and ionic targets, and ionic targets because they are uh, non-zero at thresholds, you can set exactly threshold and you get an answer for zero uh, outgoing energy, so it's a bit of fun. Now to talk specifically about the, uh, the codes, so we knew that CCC uh, was onto something when we reproduced this experiment, total ionization uh, cross-section of, uh, uh, of electron hydrogen uh, sc scattering. This was just the summation of cross-sections for excitation of positive energy states. That's it. And when you get that, you say, whoa. I remember the, the, the weekend when I had four computers putting a point on this, and my wife remembers this as well because I just yelled out, and come have a look at this. It was freaky. It was particularly seen in the context of not getting agreement with experiment for 2p excitation. The experiment was redone five years later, right through everybody else's calculation as, as, as well as ours. So this told us we were onto the right thing. Now, but let's look at its history. So it was developed in 19, uh, early 1990s. Uh, in, then I paid sixty thousand dollars for 512 meg of RAM. <laughs> I'm standing in front of you because I did. 
right? Um, so then Admiti came along, his job was to extend the ideas to helium. The key thing here is we knew what to do. Then it was, you know, it took him ages. He will remember the day he came to my office and he said, how many, uh, which way should I go about calculating uh, the matrix element? I said, just do it properly. <laughs> That's it. That's my contribution. <laughs> so he did, right? And um, so then, uh, so implemented it on helium and then you know, later quasi electron, two electron atoms. And uh, when uh, the architecture, multi core architecture came along, it was easy uh, for us to implement open MP parallelization. Then uh, uh, Anatoly Heifetz uh, joined us. He was at Flinders Union at the same time, from before he went to ANU. Now my son Alex is doing his PhD with Anatoly at ANU. Uh, implemented single and double photoionization of, um, um, of helium. Then uh, Alicia Kadyrov came along, uh, looked at two center positron scattering, and that's been critical to our current engagement with CERN on anti hydrogen formation. Just time reverse uh, this process. Uh, post 2010, two center positron scattering on helium, okay. And uh, the last thing I did before I became uh, a departmental chair in 2010 is to come up with an MPI parallelization that separates the matrix calculation across many nodes and then uses a scalar pack to solve the final linear equation. Um, and uh, Alex worked uh, uh, on uh, the singularity free approach. But you know, nothing stands still. So two weeks ago I spent uh, a week on, at the GPU hackathon organized by Oak Ridge National Lab. It was, their, it was Australia's turn. They came to the Pawsey Supercomputer Center, uh, at, which is associated. Uh, we're going to be building the world's largest radio telescope. Uh, it's called Square Kilometer Array. Associated with that, we have a supercomputer center called Pawsey Center. Just got $70 million for the next supercomputer. Right? It's going to have lots of GPUs in it. So, I don't know yet. Uh, not out to tender yet. And, uh, but I, they showed me that indeed it's worth our time to redo our parallelization, and I, it's going to be me because I did the original uh, parallelization. Going to rewrite the code to be able to use GPUs, and it will be on architecture that if it doesn't have GPUs, it will go to the same directive for OpenMP. If it does have GPUs, it will go out there, and I mean I've, I've started that process. Okay, next code. Relativistic CCC, Dirac based entirely. Uh, this is a case for electron cesium uh, scattering. How am I going? Uh, okay, about seven. Seven. Thank you. Uh, this is a case where non relativistic CCC gives you exactly zero for these spin asymmetries, uh, and you need a Dirac based one uh, to get these right. Uh, Dmitry for uh, So, Dmitry uh, did this um, uh, on his way uh, to joining us at. Uh, in Western Australia, he was uh, still at the Flinders Uni at the time when he started developing this. Then, wonderful PhD student, uh, in fact, uh, Chris Bostock spent a bit of time here not so long ago. Um, he was uh, now interested in more quantum field theory. Um, and then he also incorporated uh, Bright and Merle corrections uh, during his PhD, and the parallelization uh, he used is uh, the same as uh, CCC. So that's a separate code entirely. Uh, next uh, code, now I want to talk about heavy particles. So uh, this is an example of proton hydrogen, electron capture. This is equivalent to positronium formation. So you know, we call charge exchange for heavy particles. That's just like positronium formation for positron uh, scattering on an atom. And uh, th this is a, 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 um, a, a proton, uh, the electron capture to the proton, to the projectile agreement with experiment over a very broad range uh, of uh, energies. So that works. Aren't those other calculations still used? Uh, the, 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 uh, some experiment and uh, there's uh, wind, I think, is, is a calculation. Yeah. Right? I think uh, this one top here are uh, calculations. I think these might have been experiment. I don't remember. Um, so, so this is a complete new suite of codes. Uh, same principal ideas as the, uh, the Lippmann-Schring equation uh, solution, but implemented now not for partial wave expansion, but for impact parameter representation. But uh, no approximations are required um, and, until we go on. And exactly the same parallelization as CCC for the quantum mechanical. So QM, CC is quantum mechanical, CCC 
but we also find that it's more computationally efficient to have a semi-classical approach as well. So it began with antiprotons, it's easier at single center. So antiproton does not uh, grab an electron, so a single center has worked well, but then we went to the two center proton uh, projectiles, which was necessary for that picture that I showed you, and uh, the semi-classical has Laguerre or wave-packed base, um, and uh, only open MP uh, parallelization. But you can see it's all been developed relatively uh, recently. Now, the last code I want to talk about is the molecular code that's uh, been extraordinarily uh, successful. Uh, again, the first beginning is just like I showed you for electron hydrogen. We knew we were onto something with the way we're treating the H2 molecule when we reproduce the total ionization cross section from near threshold to very high energies. And uh, again, that says, you know, the structure is there, you're treating the, um, okay, um, the um, uh, vibrational uh, issues, the rotational, all of those things, everything's in place. Only possible using supercomputers. So, and the nice part about it is that now we go to a stage, we've done this several times for atoms, when we've made predictions that did not agree with the existing ex experiment, and subsequently new experiments show that in fact the theory was right and the, and the uh, experiment before went, were less accurate than what they thought, rather than saying uh, wrong. Um, um, so here's a, another example, a B triplet a sigma U plus state, I love the terminology in molecular stuff, um, and uh, this was measured quite a long time ago, and uh, Jonathan Tennyson they told me some interesting stories uh, about this. But uh, anyway, this is the calculation that we did. We pushed it to uh, convergence. It's a combination of adiabatic approach here and, and uh, uh, fixed nuclei uh, over here. Um, and uh, we got on to Morty Kaku, told him that something's not right here, and uh, he measured differential cross-sections and uh, we had absolute perfect agreement with the differential cross-section. You mentioned them as ratios of this state to elastic scattering and put it all on absolute scale, integrate it out, and uh, the agreement with experiment is, uh, uh, is now perfect and it's been accepted in, uh, in April. So we've given the proofs back, so it should be out in PRA any time now. So, uh, molecular code, what's its uh, history? Well, first of all, we assume the Bonn-Oppenheim approximation at all times, okay? We don't move away from that. So early 2010s, H2 plus and H2, so Laguerre-based structure was uh, developed by uh, Dmitry Fussar. And then we've got some wonderful uh, students, uh, Mark Zamet. Mark is now on staff at Los Alamos National Lab. And, um, and uh, so we have a spherical uh, coordinate system approach and a spheroidal uh, approach, uh, for particularly important for uh, diatomics, uh, is now in place. Uh, Again, OpenMP and MPI parallelization followed the work that I developed for CCC. Um, we have a uh, adiabatic a nuclei approach to nuclear motion, so we can do fully vibrationally resolved transitions, dissociative processes, and vibration close coupling is almost complete. It's still under development, again, that's the emphasis. So concluding remarks, there are several CCC codes with many authors. Not a single one of us knows how to run everything. Not me. No. Many of these things were developed by my uh, colleagues. Um, but the structure uh, is much the same. Uh, so it's under continuous scientific and computational development. MPI and OpenMP parallelization implement, but GPU acceleration just began in late April. It's going to be a major task, particularly for me, whilst being a departmental chair, so it should be fun. Um, Utilisation is only possible by expert users and hence only by collaboration. So I'm yeah, very sympathetic to the remarks that Klaus made. Lots of lots of things to do, many PhDs to be done. I've written these uh, things in such as positronium, hydrogen, these four body problem with rearrangement, multi-centred. They're all very difficult things, lots, lots to be done. Atom, atom collisions, uh, combination with molecules. You know, in many ways, this is just the beginning because there's just so many things to be done. Thank you very much for your time.